Look, I know I make a few models and weird sculptures and things, but I definitely didn't order that much cement. Now, I don't normally advertise things on this channel or market myself because I don't generally have anything to sell. But today I'm going to make an exception because if you're a regular viewer on this channel, you'll know that myself and Mark Page, award winning photographer, have been working on a calendar which takes its inspiration from the neo pagan Wheel of the Year. Um, the calendar that basically is based on the solstices, the equinoxes, and the changing of the seasons. Uh, we've been creating some art pieces, some really nice photographs uh, involving local models mostly drawn from the pagan community and uh, the calendar is nearing completion so we've now put it up for pre-order if you're in the uk then simply scan the qr code that's on the screen now and you'll be taken straight to the paypal site where you can order your calendar if you're outside of the uk um, things get slightly more complicated so what you have to do is send us an email. Now the email address is copa.artist. So that's C-O-P-A dot artist at gmail.com. Let us know where you live. We'll calculate the postage. And if you're still up to that, we'll tell you how much you've got to pay. And uh, hopefully we can get it sorted that way. Anyway, on with the walk. I've just walked the entire length of this meadow. I mean, the entrance to it is right, right, right back there under the gap in that tree, right at the far end of this meadow. And I've walked the length of this and I'm going to be walking down to the end there where those dogs are. And during that short walk, I've seen six jays. The jay is the prettiest of the crow family. Well, certainly in the UK anyway. Uh, all our corvids are rather bland, really. I mean, we have got chuffs, which have got bright red bills and legs. And we have got magpies that have got a bit of white on them. But for the most part, our crows and ravens and jackdaws, etc., they're all just black. But the jay is an exception. The jay is absolutely beautiful. And I'd love to be able to show you some film or some photography that I've taken of all of these jays. But they're such a skittish bird that I've never been able to get a good shot. I need to get a telephoto lens, don't I? Still not seeing a lot of fungi so far this year. There's another King Alfred's cake here. I'm seeing a few of those. There's about a third or fourth I've found this year so far. And uh, I've just spotted these teeny tiny little mushrooms growing on a bramble. But other than that, not a lot so far. But I'm out looking. And we did have a lot of rain last night, so that might bring some of it up. And it's still quite warm, so we'll see. All the berries are now forming on the ivy. They're poisonous to us, but not to birds and not to other mammals. And so consequently, they're a very, very important food source uh, as we go from autumn into winter when all the other berries have actually disappeared from the hedgerow. These will get big, they'll get large, they'll get black, and the birds will love them. And it'll keep them going for a few months. Squirrels everywhere. Let's go down this way today, doggy. Let's go have a look down here. Follow that squirrel. Wowzers, here I am bemoaning the lack of fungi and what do I stumble upon? The absolute gold standard of edible fungus in the UK. That is a chicken of the woods. That is one of the most tasty wild mushrooms you can find anywhere. It's a delicious edible fungus, which does taste like chicken, hence its common name. Yeah, it's a chicken of the woods. Now this one, as it happens, is a few days old maybe past its prime you've got to catch them when they're really really fresh and plump uh, and besides which i want this one to go to spore i want this one to chuck its spores out and go down this trail of cherry trees and then we might get more next year there were three around this area about two or three years ago um, and then we haven't seen them since and i feared they wouldn't come back because someone went along last time and knocked them all off the tree with a stick probably a kid i don't know but uh, either way they didn't come back for several years but this one's back today so hopefully there's a good future always follow the squirrel i'm walking unusually fast today because we had torrential rain overnight rain all morning it's now lunchtime, and i'm taking a very quick 
once around the fields, just like a mile and a half or whatever. Uh, so I'm panting more than I would normally. Um, I say a quick once around, it's never a quick once around with a pug, because he dawdles, but uh, we've got more rain incoming in about half an hour, and then it's gonna rain all afternoon. So I'm getting around quick while I can. There's one group of animals that like the rain too. And that's the snails and slugs, because it makes it a lot easier for them to crawl around. Although it also makes them, of course, a lot more um, vulnerable to birds. And you do see a lot of red kites coming down to the ground to pick them up. Well, so much rain we had overnight, this little channel has been dug all the way through the field to drain off the big farm field where the sheep were meant to have been this year. Uh, just to take the excess off, because otherwise it gets absolutely sodden. And it runs down to this channel, under this little bridge down through there and into the wildlife pond although of course we can't see that at the moment because it's blocked off but nevertheless the wildlife pond's going to be full it's another one of those weird levitating leaves shows how strong spider silk is though doesn't it dogs got bored and wandered off My occasional visiting dog is back today and back for a few days. This is Alfie, belongs to one of my neighbors. They're having their regular um, peeing tournament where basically Harris pees on something, then Alfie has to pee on it, then Harris has to pee on it again, and then Alfie's got to pee on it. And as a result, they can be standing in the same spot for about five minutes. But uh, yeah, I'm hoping we can actually get across the field before bedtime. That'll be good. It's all rather lovely at the moment and very warm. If you get out of the wind, it's actually very warm. But I'm not gonna moan about the wind. That's the price we pay for living up on top of a set of hills because in the nearby town of High Wycombe, they've got flooding everywhere because the river Wye has burst its banks because of all the water that's fallen. Um, we've had torrential rain and flooding in parts of the UK. I think in Hereford, they were saying that they had uh, two centimetres more rain to fall in two hours than they'd normally get for the whole of September. Uh, heart definitely goes out to those people who flooded out of their houses. It's an awful thing to happen. But here on top of the hill, the water all runs away from us. So a little bit of wind, I can cope with that. Cool, look at the gorse. From having no flowers at all, it seems to have come back with a vengeance. Uh, I suppose it's a nice late food for the, the last few remaining insects before winter, but... Uh, yeah, it's nice to see it. And a lovely big crab spider sitting up the top there, just floating in the middle of the air. Having a right old time. Well, I'm delighted to report that chicken of the woods is still on the tree two days later, so no one's knocked it off the tree so far. God, can you hear that red kite? He's right above me somewhere. Lovely noise. A bit mournful, but a lovely noise. It's a lovely, dapply, sunshiny day. Quite temperate, not cold. It's really rather nice. Uh, there is rain due in at three o'clock, I think. So that's why I'm out here at about half one-ish and uh, enjoying myself while the temperature stays as it is and staying dry. And it's lovely. Just walking through this lovely little grove of ash trees and thoroughly enjoying it. This is the little glen, if you like. It's actually the bed of an old river uh, where I did the iron rusty dragon horn thing video a couple of days ago. It's actually banks onto a local primary school and this house is over there, but this whole little dell, as they call it, comes down through here and uh, it flows. You can see the path of the old river right along here. It was an old chalk stream that got dammed up during the Victorian era to feed us several farms. And funnily enough, when we get really heavy weather, like we've had recently, really heavy rain, the rain follows the path of this river. So the wildlife pond I've featured in quite a few videos, when that overflows, it flows down to a set of pipes which feed it down into the dell here and it runs along this path and then soaks away. But it's a pretty little area to walk dogs. Lovely when the bluebells are out and also loads of wild garlic grows here as well. So it's a lovely little place. Really, really nice. 
Earlier this week, I followed the squirrel. Now it seems the squirrel's followed me home. Folk music. I've been thinking about that a lot this week because one of my favourite British folk artists, Jim Murray, has just released a new single called Spencer the Rover. Um, and I love it. Absolutely love it. Here's a quick link to it. On the fifth day of November, I have reason to remember. When first he arrived home to his family and wife. He stood so surprised when first he arrived. And welcome this stranger once more in their sight And his children gathered round him with brittle battling stories I've always been a big fan of folk music. I think it's because I grew up with it. Um, Cornwall, which is right down in the southwest tip of the British Isles. We didn't get a lot of bands come down there in the 60s and 70s. They got to Plymouth, which is in Devon, and they sometimes got down to St Austell or Newquay or some of those places in mid-Cornwall. Occasionally, some got down to Penzance because there used to be a, a venue there called the Winter Garden, but nothing came near us. Helston and the Lizard and all that sort of area, nothing came anywhere near us. So I'm afraid the only live music we ever got to see as teenagers was either getting in a car and driving 70 miles to Plymouth or watching folk music or uh, close harmony male voice choirs. Now, I started learning to play guitar when I was about 12, 13. Um, I'd already learned to play the drums and I still play the drums today, but uh, it's hard to write songs on drums. So I learned the guitar and um, pretty soon, as a lot of teenagers do, we formed a band. But the only venues we could actually play anywhere was folk clubs. So we were a little bit clever. You know, we did acoustic versions of stuff that was in the charts, like Messing in a Bottle by the Police or Dancing in the Moonlight by Thin Lizzy and bands like this. But of course, we always had to do some uh, folk standards as well. And we also used to meet in the back bar of a pub called the Blue Anchor in Helston. And the Blue Anchor is fabulous because it's a really old pub. It goes back four or five hundred years and it still brews its own ale called Spingo. I think it's the oldest brew pub in England. Uh, although the corner should say it's not in England, it's in Cornwall. But um, yeah, it's a fabulous place. And we always used to meet in the back bar on a sort of Friday night, Saturday night, bring our instruments. And if the mood took us, we'd start playing. And... Uh, but then what would happen is you get the old boys banging their tankards on the table and singing, sing something I know, boy, because they wanted to sing along. So we had to do some Cornish standards like Little Eyes, I Love You and Going Up Campbell Hill, Coming Down. Sometimes we had to sing it in Cornish as well. You know, it's a Skinner Brie Cambron more nans. That's uh, Going Up Campbell Hill, Coming Down. And uh, we had to do Way Down to the Morning. There was loads of songs that are absolute Cornish standards and we had to do them. And there's one called The Old Grey Duck. And the old great duck is the weirdest song ever. It's basically about a duck who steals a nest, goes out into the field, lays some eggs, the ducklings hatch out, they've all got horrible things wrong with them and they die. That's the whole song. That's the whole song. Apparently these ducks are born without any bills and without any tails and they can't swim and they all die. What state of mind was the person in who wrote that song? And yet it's become a classic. The old grey duck, she stole her nest and laid up in a field. And when the young ones they came forth, they had no tails nor bills. They had no tails nor bills. They had no tails nor bills. And when the young ones they come forth, they had no tails nor bills. That's just the start of it. From then on, it's just slaughter. Anyway, folk music. Love it. Listen to Jim Murray's new single. It's amazing. And buy yourself a copy of our Neo-Pagan Wheel of the Year calendar. All the details are here. Toodle pip. If you've enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing. Or click on some of these links to look at some of the other videos on the channel. Or press the like button. Or leave a comment. It would be lovely to hear from you. Any combination of those four things would be wonderful. Thank you very much.